From journalist to screenwriter, from international lecturer to artist, Melody Anderson's eclectic career path is surpassed only by her curiosity for life. After she received an honors degree in journalism, she worked for several years with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Following that, she traveled around the world and became the first woman in Australia to read a radio newscast. People start to give up on themselves, and they start to give up on their own lives. And a, depression is a very, very common ailment that family members suffer from. The most frustrating thing for family members is they sit there and keep thinking if they could just get it right, they'd solve it. Family members who go through this are not used to reaching out for help. They should be able to figure this out on their own. And when they come here, they learn that's something they don't ever have to do again. They never again have to go through this process by themselves. Two old trunks back in 1935 sit back. They don't know from anything. They just know that they want to stay sober. And they go back and they come up with this crazy idea. They've assimilated pieces from the Oxford group. They've assimilated information from um, Carl Jung about the importance of spirituality. It was Carl Jung who said that uh, my patients who get better are those who have a sense of something greater than they are. What I tell families when they come to me is we are in a war here. We're not fighting your child or you're not fighting your spouse. You're fighting uh, this disease, this, this war, this enemy um, called addiction. What we're going to do on this show, we're going to roll up our sleeves, we're going to look at the different point of views, we're going to have some more case examples, and we're going to take a look at is winning everything or is it how you play the game? So it's not the athlete's issue to police themselves in the game. This is what this guy is saying. You know, you've got to do what you've got to do to protect his quarterback, um, your team. Yes. Where are the referees? I mean, if the rules say you can't, you know, block, you can't cheat, why aren't the referees enforcing the rules? But now, wait a minute. This is a great point you just brought up. Do we have to, again, this is the ethics, do we have to have a referee to not cheat? I remember well, I was in L.A. when the fires were going on and people were taking things and saying, well, there's no one to stop me. No, but it's a different issue if there are referees. If there are referees that are supposed to call the rules and they don't see you, then you it's know. okay. Good morning, Mel. Good morning. How big of a problem is this? Well, let's put it this way. For every one person who has a problem with substance abuse, seven other people are affected. So we're talking about numbers up to 70 million people in this country are one way or the other affected by substance abuse. What age should you start talking to your kids about alcohol? I think the issue is, is what are you as a parent sending your child as a, a model on how to use alcohol? For example, uh, have they ever seen you drive a car drunk? Mm -hmm. Have they ever I seen see. you get in a car and say, you know what, I'm going to let someone else drive because that's what you do if you've had too much to drink? Have they ever seen you try to pretend like you haven't got a problem with alcohol? And most importantly, is there a family history of alcohol? This is a metabolic disease. Uh, there, is, there is a problem with the liver. The alcoholic liver does not break down alcohol like a normal liver, so it takes more to more, more alcohol to get the effect. So when you're working with parents and parents are talking to their children, if they say, oh, I can drink anybody under the table, this is not cool.